I'm Navi Naidu. I work as an emergency department uh, doctor in Queensland, Australia, and I'm here with the legendary Mike Perry. Uh, Mike, great to, to catch up with you again. Yes, it is, Navi. Uh, my name is Mike Perry from African Reptiles and Venom. I supply venom for our anti-venom production, and I do snake-related training uh, courses all over Africa. Uh, I met Dr. Roger Laylock in 1999 when I got the contract to supply the venom for the Antivenom unit. Yeah. Dr. Laylock was the uh, medical consultant for snake bites for South Africa. Right. Uh, whenever there was a snake bite case, anybody had a question, they phoned SABP, they would be given his number, and he would then consult over the phone on those snake bite cases. So me and him have had a uh, long co collaboration. He was my mentor. He started studying snake bite cases very seriously. He actually took two years of his life to do just that. To study snake bite cases. Can you tell us a little bit about syndromic management of snake bite? Right, syndromic management is what Roger came to the conclusion after doing all this work. With seeing all these snake bites, he noticed that specific snakes will give a pain and swelling syndrome, which he then termed as painful progressive swelling, PPS. Yeah. If you have a look at a snake with a neurotoxic venom, as the nervous system gets affected at the neuromuscular junction, the person becomes weaker and weaker until he's unable to help himself. So he coined the name progressive weakness for that syndrome. And then if you have snakes that cause disturbances in the uh, blood, clotting, yeah. clotting, yeah, Water Water coagulopathies, yeah. right? So that classified as a bleeding syndrome. Now, what happened with this is that the snake started shifting now. With your painful progressive swelling, mm -hmm. right? Snakes that used to be in the elapid group that used to be classified as neurotoxin has now moved out to go into that group with painful progressive swelling. Those are your spinning covers right. and the wrinkles as well. Right, so they've moved now out of the neurotoxic group into there because the main syndrome that we're going to be faced with is pain and swelling in those bites because okay. of the cytotoxic component in the venom. And so just to recap, that's the spitting cobras and the wrinkles. Yes. How, how many spitting cobras do you get in South Africa? In Southern Africa, we have four species of spitting cobras. It's the Mozambique spitting cobra, the zebra spitting cobra, the Western black spitting cobra and the black neck spitting cobra, and then the runcols. Right. So those snakes have predominantly a cytotoxic component in the venom. When you get bitten by those snakes, you're going to see mainly pain and swelling. So those snakes have now been moved out of the neurotoxic group into the into painful progressive swelling syndrome group. Cytotoxic. Yeah. Now, of interest is also you have some snakes in here, for instance, the Virgo. Mm. It's a small little snake. But it has a cytotoxic neurotoxic venom. Right. Cytotoxic component mainly around the bite side, a little bit of swelling. The neurotoxic component is far more serious. It can kill a child. And so that snake should really be classified as more neurotoxic. than neurotoxin. But what you also have is you've got this overlap. Yeah. All right. So in between cytotoxic and neurotoxic, you can have a mixed syndrome, yeah. which is called painful progressive swelling and progressive weakness. Right. Okay. So, so, so which are those? So you mentioned the bird added. The bird added, the wrinkles will also fall under those. Right. Okay. Right. And what else? And some of the cobras mm. have a tendency to have a, a greater cytotoxic component than a neurotoxic component. For instance, the, the brown forest cobra, the snake you get in uh, South Africa. Yeah. That snake bite seems to be more cytotoxic than it is neurotoxic. But there is a neurotoxic component. So which are the most potent neurotoxics? The, 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 the black mamba? That, that will be the black mamba. That honor will go to black mamba. And, and the cape cover is another very right, potent cape neurotoxic. Cobra. Yeah. Uh, and which of the other co uh, cobras are neurotoxic? If you look at the non-spinning cobras, they normally have a greater component with neurotoxins. neurotoxins, and that's the whole so of the Cape Cobra, Snowden Cobra, Angolan Cobra, and the Forest Cobra. But as I said, the Forest Cobra seems to also have a good component of cytotoxin in it. 
And, and then the interesting, if you look at what we used to classify as snakes with hematoxic venom, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we have two snakes in there. The born snake, like snake. Like twig of iron snake, yeah. yeah. Right. But if you look at snake bite overall, if you're just treating snake bites overall, your most common snake that's going to cause bleeding syndromes is actually the puff adder. Mm, okay. Right. So it's got a venom that's maybe cytotoxic, mm. right, but it has a hematoxic component. And is that so occasionally you see more bleeding than you're going to see from the twig and vine snake combined? So the, the, the bleeding from the puff adder is that not just localized to the actual bite area, but it's a, it's a generalized generalized uh, uh, anticoagulant effect. What you get is you get a tremendous drop in platelets. Right? Okay, so then that will you're be going to get ecchymosis taking right. place. Okay. The hand bite will show ecchymosis in this so, area here and the, the foot bite ecchymosis in the inner thigh. And if the platelets drop more, it goes to a general bleeding. Right. So that so that bleeding, it's it's not your conventional clotting. Uh, or uh, anti-clotting ability, it's, it's consumption of the platelets that leads to the clotting, is, am I correct? Yeah, it's a tremendous drop in platelets, yeah. yeah. It, also, it also attacks the, the um, hemoglobin. Right. It, it attacks the red blood cells. Right. They normally flat little discs with a depression mm -hmm. in them. Right. When a venom makes contact with a red blood cell, that red blood cell all of a sudden the expands source, yes. itself with plasma, right, it then becomes a round ball, and then it has little spikes on it like a little puffer fish, and it expands and expands until it bursts, and then it's destroyed. So very interesting what the venom does. In terms of statistics related to snake, actual snake bites, as well as snake deaths in right. South Africa and Southern Africa. I had a discussion with uh, Dr. Blaylock on the subject. His estimate that was that there was about one and a half thousand, perhaps two thousand snake bites per year in South Africa. In South Africa. Right. If we look at stats, we can phone uh, the stats department. On average, we have about 25 snake bite deaths per year. So out of 2,000 snake bites, 25 people right. die. Now we know, right, these are just stats. Mm. There's always yes. some gaps there. And unrecorded. Unrecorded, etc. So there are probably more snake bites than 2,000 and there's probably more deaths than 25. Yes. But those are the stats that we work with. And in terms of the, the types of snakes that lead to the most deaths, where are we sitting? My understanding is, is that Mozambican spitting cobras have got the highest amount of actual bites. It depends where you are. Right. So once this, is, this once again is a region specific thing. Spitting cobra is very common in Kuzunu Natal and Swaziland, right, where there are also a lot of people. So you mix a lot of spitting cobras mm -hmm. with a lot of people, people are going to get bitten. Right. Those bites are normally not very deadly. Very small percentage of those bites would be deadly. Okay. Right. But in Kuzunu Natal, you have other snakes also. There are four species of snakes that cause 90% of snake bites in southern Africa Puff adder, night adder, spitting cobra, and stiletto snake. Those four snakes. Okay. These snakes have a mainly cytotoxic venom that can cause painful progressive swelling syndrome. So KZN has all four of those snakes, but in the northern part of KZN, the Mozambique spitting cobra is a dominant cause of snake bite. Right. Um, and that is because it's very warm in those places. The people leave their door open at night, um, and they sleep on grass mats that they roll out at night on the floor. Right. So they sleep on the grass mat. Spitting cobras come into their homes, find that person on the ground. When they find a person, when you are covered, you are fine. If spitting cobra doesn't bite. When he finds your bare skin, the snake thinks he's found food and he does an exploratory bite on you. Okay. And you can actually get multiple bites from these snakes as they explore what is this now. And then the, 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 the famous black mamba. Right. How many bites and, and how many people actually succumb to, to black mamba bites? If we look at snake bite deaths, the two snakes that feature most prominently in actual deaths mm -hmm. will be the black mamba and the cape cobra. Right. right. And deaths are probably split about 50-50 with those two snakes. Okay. Um, and both of them are very potent neurotoxic. 
very very bad to learn talking language. Yeah. So so actual the the the, the lethality or the, the the kill rate of snakes is very much related to the neurotoxic component yeah. as opposed to anything else. Yes. Well, Mike, thanks very much. That was extremely interesting. It's a real pleasure. And uh, I'm looking forward to actually coming on one of your snake bites, your snake safaris, and going out into the bush and actually. It's good fun. Yeah, no, no, I'm sure it will be. Excellent. Good stuff. Thank you.